I just kind of, I just pictured um, all of us just doing some intense, you know, not just, is it not on? You just, you just, okay. Um, just doing some intense praying in the spirit, you know, let's pray in the spirit and that's, and get it focused. I, I imagine like when we, when we're praying in the spirit, imagining a, um, like a, a ceiling and put like a force pushing through the ceiling. And so just for the next minute or so, let's just, uh, get together and, and, and get in some intense praying. And Amen. For those of you who haven't uh, prayed in tongues, um, st- use that time, this time to do de- to declare um, His glory. I mean, s- declare uh, His goodness. You know, praise yes. Him and thank Him. You know, just start speaking those things out. Yes, Hallelujah. Okay. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when uh, Linda asked me to uh, to, uh, speak a little bit on uh, intercession, um, I first kind of started with just, uh, I have papers flying all over the place here. (laughs) It's hard when you get a hand. I uh, first started with just looking at, at the internet, what the internet had to say about what is intercession, and this is what I came up with. Uh, the action of intervening on behalf of another, which is good, um, and also uh, one thing I liked was taking hold of God's will and refusing to let go until his will comes to pass. I like that one. Amen. And then also as warfare, that intercession is a form of warfare. It's God's battle plan for your life. Um, just like in that movie, it is his. Uh, it's basically um, raising the standard. Um, Amen. <coughs> one thing I remember hearing, and maybe you've heard it also, is someone has said that when you go into prayer, you don't you don't want to come in with the mindset of I'm praying for victory, but rather I'm praying from mm-hmm. from victory. Right. Amen. Right. Because right. it's all about your elevation. Where are you positioned? Where is your position you're coming from? Mm-hmm. If you are praying from down from a place so for victory, then you haven't you haven't gotten it yet. So you're down here. I see that mm-hmm. like when she was talking about the flesh mm-hmm. and the spirit. We're in the spirit. We have a higher position. You know, throughout the whole the mm-hmm. Bible, I'm glad Amen. I brought my water. Amen. Um, throughout the Bible, God is trying to build us up and Amen. raise us up to a higher place. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, a higher position, a higher place of looking at things, and um, you know, like just on our on our little cards, it says, "Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon you." Or Arise from the circumstances in which life Amen. has kept you. Yes, um, it's a place of break, of elevation. He wants to elevate our the way we look at things, how we see things. Um, yes, he says in the Word that he has raised us up with him to, and seated us in heavenly places. 
Yes. In Christ, far above all principalities. Yes. You know, earlier we were talking about how he has, uh, he says, come boldly into the throne room to receive grace. Yes. In the throne room, I mean, how much higher can you get is in the throne room. And he says Amen. boldly. And I mean, if he wants us to come boldly, then that means he really wants us there. Yes. You know, come up here where I'm at. Yes. This is where the grace, this is where you're going to receive yes. your grace. Amen. It's in my presence. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, um, um, I was just, not too long ago, I was praying with my son. There was an issue where there was, we really needed the Lord's direction on something. There was, wanted, there was things that were saying this, and things, there was a little bit of confusion, basically. And so we just started praying in the Spirit. We started praying in tongues, and we started coming against confusion, you know. We cast out confusion in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We declare that... Uh, we have the mind of Christ. We declare that we are the children of God. Therefore, we hear his voice. We are his sheep. And the voice of a stranger we will not follow. Yes. And one of the things that came to my mind is God brought up that whole thing about the standard. He's, and I started saying, you are the standard. You are the standard. And I started asking God. He reminded me of that verse that said, that you know, when the enemy comes in like a flood, he raises up a standard. Amen. And um, uh, I've heard so many people focus on the the part of whether God comes in or the enemy comes in like a flood, or whether God comes in like a flood. But the part that I want to emphasize is the part of the standard that yeah. is raised. Amen. And I am so I'm looking into it a little bit more, and I thought it was so interesting. The standard is basically a flag, you know, back when in, in the battles, it was a flag that preceded an army. Mm -hmm. And it was raised and it directed the fight. The armies would rush into battle and then they'd see that flag raised and, and it, uh, it represented what they were up against. So it, um, they would realize who they were fighting, so then they'd stop, regroup, and figure out their battle plan. And as long as the flag was raised, they continued to fight. And I thought of Moses, you know, when he had the staff mm -hmm. raised. Uh, they would, as long as he had it raised, the people would be, the Israelites were winning the battle. But when it started, he started to weaken, and um, then they would start to lose. So then he got the reinforcement. That makes me mm -hmm. think of what Kathy was talking about earlier. But the reinforcement of keeping that standard, which is the authority of God. The standard is the authority of God. I Amen. thought, okay, what's the standard for my home? The standard for my home is as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. The standard Amen. for my home is that my children are taught of the Lord and great is their peace. Yes. The standard Amen. for my home is that we walk in health because he bore my sicknesses and my disease. Yes. And the standard for my home is that I have a, that I live in a haven of peace. That peace surrounds me. It garrisons about me. And um, that is a Amen. really interesting Amen. word about peace. Um, one of the things I've, I uh, have done is I've started doing a prayer walk. Actually, I've been doing prayer walk around my neighborhood and my home. For a while, but I'm tr I've been trying to start up a prayer walk within the, the city of Northfield and uh, start going after the schools. And I'd like to get into that a little bit more. Amen. But, I know. <laughs> but um, I was out walking one day, and I could hear I could hear my feet when I was walking. I don't know that I've ever really paid attention to that before. And I could hear my feet walking, and it was like God was showing me every, that when the sound of your feet is heard in the spirit, because I'm taking amen. territory for God. Yes, he says that amen. every place that your foot shall tread, He's given that to you. Amen. And so I'm putting on my shoes of peace. You know, I'm going out there putting my armor on, putting my shoes of peace on, and I'm claiming that territory. And I learned one thing about peace. Okay, so Hebrew, the Hebrew. Um, meaning of peace is shalom. Mm -hmm. and, and shalom is comprised of four uh, letters, which are pictures. Mm -hmm. One being sheen, lame, 
Vav, and Mem. Sheen is a picture of teeth, and it re represents destruction. Lamed portrays a staff, which illustrates authority. Vav is a nail that carries the idea of fastening or establishing. And Mem is displayed as water, and it illustrates chaos. So this is great. When you're putting on your shoes of peace, you are destroying the authority that yes. establishes chaos. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hi. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise so, God. Anyway, I, and one other thing is I, I remember hearing someone say, uh, he was teaching on calling those things that be not as though they were. And someone came up to him and said, well, isn't that kind of like lying? And he says, only if you quit. <laughs> I thought that was very powerful because, you know, let Amen. God be true and every man is a, a liar. Amen. As long as that standard is raised, we don't stop until we take over the territory. I thought Amen. you have this picture of Amen. like this land and there's all these flags all over. And and they're written on the ban on the flags are written different names like anxiety, grief, suicide, <laughs> depression, <laughs> financial lack, whatever it might be. And then this army going in, raising the flag and just declaring God's standard. And Amen. then until they, they occupy, until yes. they occupy, and you don't stop until you occupy, and then you can plant that flag in. Amen. And Amen. That, is, that is how I see prayer and intercession. You're going from a place, a position, a higher position, and you're looking at it from a higher position. Because yes. as long as you're looking at it down here, mm -hmm. then... You know, yeah. that, that's not, that's where praying in the spirit comes in. You know, how mm -hmm. powerful praying in the spirit is. When mm -hmm. you're praying in tongues, it says that you utter mysteries. Mm -hmm. Yes. And mysteries are basically things that are hidden. You know, yeah. how many problems do we have we don't have the answer for? A marriage yes. that doesn't, has been years of hurt and pain and you can't figure out how mm -hmm. it's ever going to be restored. Mm -hmm. What if it's children that are locked on drugs, mm -hmm. addicted, or uh how are they ever going to come back to the Lord? Or what mm -hmm. about, um, I am so in debt, and my income is this, and I don't know, how am I ever going to find a way out of this mess? Mm -hmm. You know, there's so many problems that in our natural way of thinking, we don't know what the solution is. But mm -hmm. we can pray in the tongues, and we can, mm -hmm. re we can utter mysteries. Mid yes. Mysteries are being uttered and revealed. I mean, God... Well, one thing I noticed that when I am praying in the Spirit, He gives us gives me more discernment. So when I, I remember, for I was first filled with the Spirit when I was twelve, and it was a slow process because I would say I'd probably pray for in tongues for a minute, maybe the next week, maybe one more minute, you know. <laughs> so not too much happening. I can't say I now noticed much difference. But like a athlete, when they go in. Um, and they're training, they're going to win, they, they're, they're equipping themselves, they're building, you go into the gym, you start off small, and then you a mm -hmm. little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit Amen. more, and you're building muscle. And that's how I see it. It's like it's mm -hmm. discern, you start being more sensitive to the Spirit. Things mm -hmm. of the Spirit just start to um, be, be more clear. Because now, mm -hmm. praying in the Spirit, I mean... I'm a spirit, God's a spirit, my enemy's a spirit. Mm. I should be praying in the spirit, you know, I should be uh, yes. operating yes. At, the, yes. at a higher position. Yes, yes. Um, amen. So I would encourage that. I would encourage you to start, if you haven't already, to start with whatever you feel like you can handle. Like, okay, it's 10 minutes. You know, and that 10 minutes might seem like an hour to you at first, <laughs> but mm -hmm. start with that. And then increase it, increase it, and you will find that things will just start, mm -hmm. oh, oh, light, you know. Mm -hmm. There's revelation yeah. in the Spirit. There's revelation mm -hmm. to be, that we can get from the Spirit. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. I mean, when you think about it, where did God, ha where did Jesus have them go to receive uh, the endowment of power? He sent them to the <coughs> upper room. I mean, mm -hmm. everything is, it's all symbolic, you know? He's Amen. Like, go to the upper room, and we will be endued with power. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, Jennifer, you should share, share about your, your house and how, what you did. 
to, okay. to receive your house. Okay. Um, well, you know, we've, I mean, I don't even know how far to go back. We've had kind of a journey, and we are still on a journey. But um, just to kind of get a background, you know, we went through some pretty not so great financial places and ended up um, renting, we were renting um, pretty, you know, a, a place. Thank the Lord for it. I mean, he he he, he ordained the situation. He he brought this man, wonderful man into our life who provided a place for us to stay. Um, but I knew in my heart that this was a temporary place. It wasn't where I wanted to stay. And um, and but I had we, what we had gone through was we had gone we lost our home basically. And so what happened was that I. I was going through at that time when I was when I was in my home. I was praying for that we would keep it, that we would have it. But then we lost it, and so then I lost. During that process, you know, God brought me through a lot, and He. Um, but then He was trying to build me back up because I I kind of I had to learn some things of being content in him and trusting in him mm -hmm. but then he brought me to a place of, of bringing back my hope that it was okay for me to dream again you know mm -hmm. i i thought that if i started dreaming for a house again that i it somehow meant i was not thankful for what he provided for me mm -hmm. and um but anyways he was like it's okay just because you're you're dreaming big doesn't mean that you you're not thankful, you know, like, he's trying to let me know, I know, I know you're thankful, and so I did, and I started writing out what I wanted, and I went, I, I stretched it, I mean, there is no w way in the natural, the what I was asking for, that it could, I mean, it would take an act of God, I mean, it was like, I was asking for something way beyond my ability, and, but I, I was writing it out, and I even, and I didn't know how you know it's like there's supposed to be an act of faith. I didn't know what is my act of faith other than I'm I'm confessing it and and praising and all and doing that kind of stuff. But I one thing I'd heard Kenneth Copeland do years ago was he had he would write out a check for some bill and then he never mailed it. But I mean it was his point of contact for his faith. And so that's what I did. It was my point of contact for my faith, and I wrote out a check for, you know, a lot of money. <laughs> and thanks God for my house. <coughs> well, what happened was, I didn't even recognize it at first, how, how he worked it, was a friend of mine owns a home in Northfield. Big, beautiful, fabulous home. She she had moved out of has another house, but she couldn't sell the one in Northfield, so then she rented it. But then the people who rented from her destroyed the home, so then she had to come back in, fix it all up again, and then try to sell it again. But it was having trouble just because of the size of the home and the market. It, I guess it wasn't wasn't uh, going. But she called me and said. Uh, don't say no, but would you be interested in renting our house? And at first I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I can't, I can't afford that. But she brought it down to a place that it was a little bit of a stretch for me, my, me but yet it was way below what it valued at. And Tell them how many square feet it is. It's over 4,000 square feet. Wow. <laughs> it's huge. It's a it's six huge. bedroom home. Yeah. Something, and we don't need that by any means. But I go, I walk around in the house, and I'm thinking, God, I, I just feel so blessed. I mean, mm -hmm. I just feel like thank you that you would do this for me. You know, mm -hmm. it yeah. just, I feel loved. Amen. Wow. Yeah. Amen. So, but you know, you stretched. She, she, she wrote it out, and she wrote a large amount out in faith, believing for it. So. You know, there is, a, God li loves faith. He just loves faith. Yeah. And, um, you know, I know you said that it's a possibility you might even be able to buy it. 
Yeah, at some point, so, and, and that, so, that, so we're still on that journey. <laughs> so, you know, the, it's just the whole point is, is pray, believe, expect God loves that. He really does. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to read one last thing. I, it's, a, it's a prophecy that I printed out uh, by, I don't, I've never even heard of these people before, but it's Russ and Katie Walden from Father's Heart Ministry. And this is very encouraging. Okay. The Father says today that my eyes scan the earth to show myself mighty in behalf of the kneeling ones. As you have planted your knees with weeping and with prayers, you will lift your hands full of the bounty and the harvest of answered petition, says the Father. I am calling forth in the earth those who will be known as the kneeling ones. As men and women in diverse places respond to my call, says the Father, they will become an army confronting principalities and powers they will open the gates of utterance for a new outpouring of my spirit. I am doing a new thing in the earth, says the 